Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to um, solve and graph this linear system of inequalities. So to do that, what we need to do is graph both these inequalities. And the easiest way to graph inequalities is just to graph your boundary line um, in the same manner and in fact that you graph linear equations. So I'm just going to rewrite both of these inequalities to the left and to the right as equations. Because basically what we're looking at is for you know, what is going to be the shape of our line as an equation. Negative 2. OK, so um, in here, I, the easiest way for me to go ahead and solve this would be to write actually both of these in slope-intercept form and graph using the slope-intercept method. So to do that, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And I have y equals a negative 5 halves x plus 5, where negative 5 halves is my slope and 5 is my y-intercept. So when graphing the slope, we need to understand that we could rewrite slope as negative 5 over 2, or we could write as positive 5 over negative 2. They still represent the exact same answer, uh, or slope. Y-intercept, we always want to remember that is a coordinate point. Now let's get over to this one. Now this one's going to add a couple steps. The only thing that I needed to do to isolate the y was to divide by 2 over here. Um, but here, I have the 5x on the same side as, my, as a y as well. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the negative 5x. So plus 5x minus 5x is going to go to 0. Now I'm left with 2y is equal to um, negative 2 minus 5x. Now we always want to rewrite that in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So we want to write our variable in front of, before our constant. So I'll rewrite this as 2y equals negative 5x minus 2. Now what I'm going to do is undo multiplication by 2 by dividing by 2 on both sides. Therefore, I get y equals a negative 5 halves x minus 1. All right, so now I have a new slope for this one and a y-intercept. And just like my last equation, my slope can be a negative 5 halves or a 5 or negative 5 divided by 2 or 5 divided by negative 2. And then my y-intercept is 0 comma negative 1. All right, so now that I know the y-intercept and the slope, I'm basically just going to plot the y-intercept and then use the slope to find the next point. So in this equation, I have 0, 5. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make my point. That's my y-intercept. Now I'm going to use my slope to find the next point. So I'll use this one, negative 5 over 2. So since the change in the y-coordinates is negative 5, I'm going to go down 5 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to, since the change in the x values is positive 2, I'm going to go over to the right two units and create a nice little slope triangle. All right, now I'm going to connect those, but we don't really know is our boundary line going to be uh, dashed or solid. And you can see from our inequality, which I transferred over here, you can see that our line is actually less than, not less than or equal to. So therefore, our graph is actually going to be a dashed line. So I don't want to confuse you. By, use, by using that slope triangle, but that's actually going to be a dashed boundary line. Now let's go ahead and graph the other one. Now this one has a slope uh, or a y-intercept at negative 1. So I'm going to go down to negative 1 and make my point. Now this slope um, is 5 over negative 2, which is very similar to this one. Oh, yeah. So, OK. So this one is 5 over negative 2, which is actually the exact same. Well, rather than going down 5 to the right 2, which you could do, you could also go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the left 2. And this one is also going to be a dashed line. Up 5 over 2 would probably be like that. So since they have the same slope, we now know that these are going to be parallel lines. All right? But still, we need to be able to determine our shading. Is our shading, are we going to be shading above you know, or below each one of these lines? Now, the best point to choose for your test point is going to be 0, 0. And what we want to do is now that we have both boundary lines graphed, we want to be able to determine where exactly is the shading going to be. So the easiest way to do that is to take both of your inequalities and plug in your test point. And the best test point, again, is the origin 0, 0, as long as your graphs do not go on or do not lie on your boundary, boundary or your test point. So therefore, now I'm just going to plug in 0 for x and for y. And now I go ahead and evaluate. Now remember, this is my first boundary line that I dra grafted right here. So therefore, I have 0 is less than negative 5 times 0 is 0 plus 10. And you can see 0 is less than 10. That is true. So since it's true, since my test point is true for this boundary line, 
I am going to shade below it. And to represent that, I'm just going to show two arrows so I remember where I'm shading. I don't want to shade yet. Now I'm going to take this inequality, which is 5 um, x, or plug in 0, plug the zeros in for x and the y. Okay, And then here I have 0 is greater than negative 2. So now for this inequality, 0 is greater than negative 2, which is true. So therefore, I'm going to shade above this one. So since my, my uh, region that is going to make both, or since my region that's going to retain all the, the points that make both inequalities true is, be, is below this boundary line and above this boundary line, that means my region is going to be between these two pair of lines, which is going to look like that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve and graph a system of linear inequality. Thanks.